Hello there and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit and I am pleased to be joined by a man who is known for despising all things pumpkin spice. And his name is Mike Roth. I, um, newsflash, I'm a man. No, Sorry. I'm just, <laughs> Michael Roth, if, if you send your angry letters now, he thinks pumpkin spice, two thumbs down. You know, when it first came out, yeah. it was new, it was exciting, it's like, oh, it's in the coffee, but eventually you just get sick and tired of having pumpkin spice in everything. Too much of a good thing is what you say? <sighs> I'm saying a little spoiled. Mm. Kind of like uh, the Zemos when they came out. Everybody loved them for a week. This might be the first time my fact is true. Very good. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we get started with this week's show, we have a new affiliate to welcome in. It has been a while since we welcomed a new one. And this week, we would like to welcome in Channel AUTV20 out of Ashland, Ohio. Michael, they are showing the real reviews on their channel, and we do appreciate it, and as always, when we have a new affiliate to talk about, you have a fact, some facts about the uh, the area that we're coming from. So, what do you know about Ashland, Ohio? Well, I know Ashland, Ohio, um, originally was named Uniontown, okay. but there is such a huge um, rash of everybody wanting to be called Uniontown. Okay, and there's already one in Ohio, so they changed it to uh, Ashland. Um, uh, they did it out of support for the Kentucky Congressman. Henry Clay, if you remember him from the 1820s. So of course. Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he seemed like a great guy. He was uh, someone that was also endorsed by Abraham Lincoln, which is someone you Heard do know. Heard of that know. guy. Um, this weekend, coming up, uh, October 17th and 18th, they are having their uh, national champion alpaca show, and they're also having their fourth annual Autumn Fiber Festival, which That's sounds pretty lot. exciting. That's a but, lot going on. But the one thing that I found that I really actually like is uh, it sounds like they have this business out there that I would love to visit. It's named after one of my favorite sh movies. It's called The Caddyshack Indoor Golf and uh -huh. uh, Fun. It has... Uh, um, Fun, uh, five PGA golf simulators, has a full bar. Does it have a gopher? It has giant Jenga and a monster putting green. Again, dancing gopher? Yes or no? I would I would have to assume yes. Yeah, you have I, to, I right? need, If you're going to put that name on I, it, yeah. I, I need to visit this place. They also okay. have a antique tractor engine show in July. If we uh, happen to go out there in July sometime on hey, our... I am going to Ohio next week as we record this. Mm -hmm. I will be going through the beautiful state of Ohio, and I may just have to stop through Ashland, do a little putt-putt on, on the Caddyshack course, see for myself if we have a dancing gopher. Take a picture. I, I want to see it. We'll I really do. do. In front of their well, welcome sign. Well, oh yeah, and they, they're famous around their state for their welcome sign yeah, I that get a uh, proclaims that. that they uh, they're the world headquarters of nice people. I and love it. If you I come to it. Wisconsin, we're actually just overly nice here. We're all yeah, we're yeah. holding doors open, sure. saying please and thank you, yeah. even when it's not making sense in the sentence at all. But but in Ashland, Ohio, they they take it up a notch, and we if, thank them for bringing real reviews into your homes in Ashland, Ohio. Hopefully, there's going to be a part two about this. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, but TV twenty AU TV twenty, we do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, uh, what we have on the marquee this week, sir? We have a couple mm. of movies uh, on the marquee, and the first one we have is. Pan, mm -hmm. the new retelling of the well-known Peter Pan story. This was supposed to be the big one for the weekend. Right. Well, yeah, it was big. Uh, from director <laughs> Joe Wright, uh, we have young Levi Miller stars as Peter, mm -hmm. uh, and he is an orphan who is kidnapped early on in the movie uh, by a dread pirate named Blackbeard, played by Hugh Jackman. Uh, he is uh, taken into slavery and goes off on this... Uh, like a Spanish galleon that floats th floats through the sky. Mm -hmm. um, stick with me here. Uh, while he is in uh, in slavery, he meets up with a, a man named Hook, mm -hmm. uh, played by Garrett Hedlund, mm -hmm. and uh, who is working out some accents in this movie. He is. Uh, it was a kind of a whisper yell, and, and it seemed like at times he was trying to do like a Jack Nicholson accent. And other, I mean, it was yeah. it was all over the place, but. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, they are, uh, Blackbeard is trying to find the world's biggest supply of Pixum, pixie dust, concentrated pixie dust that can do all sorts of magical things, and they go to Neverland, and they discover all kinds of things. There's, this story is so hard to tell because this story is all over the place. Well, it's, uh, they definitely want to express imagination, and oh, there yeah. is, there is a lot of, Visual things that yeah. were exciting to a point, but it kind of gets mixed up with some really bad photography. Everything is oh. under a very muddy filter. 
Um, so you have these beautiful scenes that should be like the Festival of Colors in mm -hmm. India, where uh, it sounds bad, but when someone dies, they turn into this poof of colorful yeah. chalk. This should be beautiful, and it was nice, but they always had a brown filter in there. But here's the thing, though. A brown or is, blue filter. So this is, they promised that this would be the, like, the prequel to the Pan story, because mm -hmm. he is, he's friends with Hook, yeah. as opposed to the well-known story of Peter versus Captain mm -hmm. Hook. This is a young Hook, it's a young Peter, um, and it's this whole weird story, but the, 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 the cinematography, the CGI specifically in this movie was 1998 CGI. It was perhaps some of the worst CGI I've seen in a decade. It was ridiculous. The, the Neverbirds were a little weird. The, the Neverbirds, the mermaids. It looked like a video game scene uh, that I saw. In the, it looked like The Mummy Returns when the Scorpion King first shows oh, up. No, no, That's no. The CG no, it was that, that awful was CGI. Mm -hmm. And... To top it off, the sets, uh -huh. I could smell the plaster still drying on the set. The <laughs> sets look like sets, and the CGI look like crap. Mm -hmm. That's not a good combo. There were some beautiful moments, yeah. but overall, the look of the movie was tragic. And then you have, there, it felt like Joe Wright had so many, like he had a sketchbook full of ideas of what yeah. he wanted, and he just threw it all up on the screen. A, a lot of the things in his sketchbooks were one-liners that were made famous in the book or okay. other movies. And he just kept on regurgitating stuff That's, like, this is where it, it was first said. That this is irritated original. me so much because they tried so hard to let you know, this is not your daddy's Peter Pan. This is not the Peter Pan story you know. We're going, we're breaking away from it. But then they kept making awful winks back at it, like when Peter first escapes and he's like, oh, he's lost. He's like... Oh, yes. He's a oh. lost boy. Wink. Like, stop. Well, if it's Just... not supposed to be your daddy's Peter Pan, then how come they kept on playing music that was popular when your daddy was oh. little? That, and actually, they didn't keep on doing it. They had this idea Double that times. every time Hook comes out for a big announcement, they're going to sing Blackbeard. a song. Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Who's... It's actually exactly like Hook. Yeah, he's just but anyhow, different guy. Yeah, but different guy. Totally different guy. But that's and, how he's introduced is the uh, yeah, with thousands the Nirvana of slaves song. singing Smells Like Teen Spirit. And then uh, before that, it was uh, um, the uh, Ramones. Sure. Yeah. And it's like, it was why so... are you doing this? If you're trying to attract a younger crowd, why are you playing something that well, I listened and, to when I was in high school? And that's school? my big problem with the movie is that the tone and what the movie was trying to be was all... I don't know who the movie was made for. It definitely wasn't for kids. I mean, I brought, well, my, I brought my son with it, and he's mm -hmm. laughing like, this is so dumb. He at one point leaned over. He's the one that identified the Nirvana song to me. I was trying to pinpoint, like, what are they singing? Because it was a weird. And he's like, is that Smells Like Teen Spirit? I'm like, I think it is. Yeah. And so I'm going, okay, the other this one is was what Blitz we're Creek doing. Blop, by the way. There you so. go. I'm like, is, if this is what we're doing, great. Because Hugh Jackman was over the top as yeah. Blackbeard. So, okay, this is going to be an over the top version. Now, the beginning of the movie was not over the top. Okay, we're going to do this. But then it felt like it shifted again and it shifted again. Mm hmm. The whole tone of the movie was just off. I, I brought my daughter, and she was uh, furious afterwards. She says, <laughs> and I never heard anybody complain about uh, the kid because, uh, you know, in a way, he was less overacting than everybody else. Yeah. Everybody wanted to do a character, but yeah. the character didn't quite hit, yeah. except for Levi. Levi was just acting like a kid. Just, a kid. But my, my daughter, she was like, that kid could not stop shaking his head. Every time he said something, he was just shaking his head all the time. It made me so angry. There there was so many rip-offs in this movie. First off, they completely ripped off the plot of Star Wars. Okay. Okay. I did not see that. Oh, Peter is Luke. Uh-huh. Peter is the, the orphan uh -huh. going off to fulfill a destiny. Uh -huh. He saves the princess mm -hmm. in Tiger Lily. Uh-huh. Uh, you have a rogue who becomes his friend, but is not in it to help him, he's in it for himself, who even at one point we recreate the Death Star scene from the, from the end of the first Star Wars movie where Peter is sailing off and he has Blackbeard in his black suit following him, chasing him, <laughs> and who comes crashing in to knock Blackbeard off course and like, take the shot, kid, uh, said, no, you don't earn that. You did not earn this. Yeah. They ripped off Star Trek with the final line of the movie. Um, another it thing, was another thing unearned. I, I didn't like or appreciate about this movie, you assume that it should wrap up and explain all the things that, like, uh, oh, Hook, how did he become Hook? It, it doesn't tell you. It felt it, like it really, every... It, 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 it is actually like, a useless movie. Yeah. If they don't make any sequels, which they won't, because no. this has failed miserably. It's going to lose well over $100 million. Yeah. Um, but 
a standalone, I highly suggest don't sing this. It's just going to confuse you. <laughs> there are so <laughs> many other Peter Pan stories, movies that are so much better. And it, the thing that Read drove me book. nuts is like it felt like every 20 minutes because they didn't know how to progress the story mm -hmm. that they would just tell another prophecy. There were so many prophecies in this movie of, and with horrible reenactments, sand creatures or weird vision dreams. And it's like, well, and then this prophecy, so now we're doing this. Now we're going to, and all of a sudden now, fix, pick, Blackbeard's trying to get pixie dust to make him immortal. Like, when did this come into play? Who's, what, now he's like the last airbender and they're shooting pixie dust at people? Like, yeah. stop it. All I wanted was Rufio. The whole movie, I'm going, where's Rufio? There's no Rufio. Bring me Rufio. But they did make a. Uh, I thought the one guy they was. They said Fangarang. They did mention about crowing. They yeah. did. They did all this. But kind it of was stuff just. It was. It was a failure. The the finale of the movie had me so mad. It was just ridiculous. And yeah. It, it's too bad because I was actually looking forward to Pan. I was hoping that it would be good, and unfortunately, we did not get a good movie. I don't think, in my no. opinion, at least. Um, I don't know about you. What did you end up giving Pan? Well, I, I gave it a mediocre. Um, I was interested in the movie um i think they had some visual concepts that really didn't uh, pan out quite uh, right i see what you did there <laughs> but um i, I gave it a 2.5 mm -hmm. this is not a good movie i didn't think it was bad i think it's just a time waster yeah i i thought it was uh the cgi was like i said horrendous i'm not gonna go back into it i gave it one and a half stars there were interesting looks to it and I liked the beginning of the movie it had me intrigued but it just betrayed all of that and I do not recommend you seeing Pan I, I, at I, all I definitely wasn't bored in it it's just afterwards no, it's bored, I just but it, like, felt it's like it's me going what, what what was that yeah why yeah yeah so it, it, it really should have never have came no, to I agree yeah. I agree uh, all right moving on sir the next movie we have on the marquee what do you have a lot better movie okay um 99 homes uh made by Raman Bahrani you got it Thank you very much. Uh, we have Dennis Nash. This is a, a kind of a period piece, not too far ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> Seven years ago. Period but this really tells a lot about what was going on. Right. This is the start of the financial crash. People were losing their houses. People were losing their homes. People were losing their jobs. It was a terrible financial crisis. Um, that, and this was taking place a little bit after the crash. You see uh, Andrew Garfield, who plays Dennis Nash. He... Um, Working, he constructed homes, but with the uh, crisis, no one needed homes built anymore. He lost his job. He uh, lost his home because he couldn't afford payments on it anymore. It becomes um, very um, obvious to uh, Andrew Garfield that he needs to uh, get a job and make money quick. And the only way people were doing it during this time was to be in cahoots with a bank. Sure. That's where you get uh, Michael Shannon, who plays Rick Carver, um, he is one of these guys who flips homes, sells properties, and this was a great time for him because all he had to do was evict people and he right. could just get it for pennies, pretty much. Yep. Um, he was doing scams also in order to uh, increase his profit margin. Scamming the Fannie Mae system? Uh, Andrew Garfield uh, ends up, um, uh, I'll call him Dennis Nash. Yes. Dennis Nash, he ends up uh, getting a job with him and doing the same things that he that was done upon him to other families. And you could see throughout this movie that it starts to chew away on, on him. He loves getting the money. He loves the fact that he's going to take his uh, mom who lives with him and his son who lives with him and hopefully get him to a home and really be successful. But at the same time, how can he do this to other people? Right. It's wrong. Yeah. It, it, and it's uh, based on a true story um, about a guy who had a son who went through this and actually... Uh, I'm not going to tell you because then <laughs> yeah, I'm don't, telling don't you in the away. movie. But this this was actually really well acted. I don't, I'm not fond of Andrew Garfield. Every time I see him, he's he's kind of a mouth breather. His mouth is always open. He doesn't guy, look intelligent at all. Let me say one thing about Andrew Garfield. That guy could pull off some great accents. I have to remind myself that he's British. He, he Every did, time I yeah. see him, I'm like, he that's is a British. pretty good Southern accent. Yeah. He, I never, never once has he gone into a raspy hook voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I, uh... There's a few things I really liked about this movie. First things first, the opening shot of the movie is like this long, single, continuous tracking shot following Michael Shannon as he's mm -hmm. doing business, about to foreclose on a family. You see, it just establishes who his character is. Yeah. Just this take charge, no nonsense. I'm throwing you out of your house today. I don't have time to argue with you. You're out, go. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful shot just following him and you go, okay, I get who this guy is. And then the, the filmmaker did a great job when you, there's the eviction. He yeah. shows up to throw Andrew Garfield, his mom and his kid, out. And every time they cut to 
Garfield, Dennis Nash, the camera started to slowly spin around him, pan around him, and it's kind of built this sense of dizziness and, and like, whoa, panic what's, and, and just panic yeah. and everything. And you start to kind of swirl like he is, like you, you know, you're getting the same feeling that's in his head. And I'm like, these are great. These are, this beautiful. Mm -hmm. Michael Shannon is quickly becoming one of my favorite actors. Yeah. He could, he elevates every movie he's in. Oh. Everything. And this role was perfect for him. Because you know, he just plays the charming menace. He seems like the kind of guy that's always been there. And really, the list of things he's acted in, it's not that long. But he's he usually just... a, a background guy, secondary guy. He's, I mean, in the last few years, he's starting to get elevated. But mm -hmm. he's just always a good. He was he was a character actor for a little while. Like, I like that guy who was like the partner in the movie. You know? Like, yeah. yeah. It's Michael Shannon. And he was great. And he was great as the, the guy who was slowly poisoning Dennis yeah. and was slowly bringing him in to him, you know. And, but it, and, it's also not that one dimensional. You no. also find more about him and what makes him. Well, like I say, he had a guy. certain charm to him. It yeah. wasn't like he was just the bad guy. No, he had this charm to him, and he. You, I, I like how you could watch Dennis just slowly lose his soul, He's slowly selling his soul off. All he wanted to do was get his home back. Yeah. I mean, he goes. This is the guy that threw him out of his house. He goes to confront him. And finds himself working for him yeah. that day. And, like, I just want to get my home back. But, you get the money to get your home back, now what? But during that time, I mean, to a lot of people, it was a severe crisis like that. Where yeah. if someone said, yeah, I just screwed you over, but I got 30 bucks. I like the cut of your moxie. I like the cut of your gym, <laughs> kid. You want to work for me? And he's like, I guess, 50 bucks, sure, I guess I'll yeah. do it. And uh, that was kind of one of the only things that I didn't like about the movie was the quick turnaround. It was too quick for me. I mean, you went from literally, this is the monster that just pulled you from your family home. There was great tension. They spent so much time in the courtroom and on, on the house building this tension and then to immediately just turn him. Like, he goes to confront him and it's like, hey, you want to go literally shovel crap for me for 50 bucks? I guess so. And they're like, ah. well, See, I, I, I felt the desperation beforehand. There's desperation, well, it, right. But, it, there, like, he didn't even get to say anything to well, him. The, He's like, oh, I'll just swallow my rage. Well, the guy, I mean... Uh, in the beginning, you had um, Andrew Garfield, uh, Dennis Nash, already at a construction job, and the yeah. foreman of the job is just like, "That's it, shut you it down, shut it We're down." Not paid. And people are still working. He's like, "You don't get it. What you've done already, you're not getting paid." Yeah. And uh, Dennis Nash is already poor. He right. is not doing this job because he's rich and he's bored. He has to feed his family, and he comes home, and some jerk is there with the cops saying, "Oh, this is my house now." You're trespassing. You're trespassing. Get out of here. I'm doing you a this, favor. Give me two minutes. This is a courtesy. Te two minutes. Courtesy. Get what you need and get out. What you can We're carry. being the nice guys. Now he get out of great. our house. That was Michael Shannon was just phenomenal in this movie. Yeah. And uh, it, I think the director did a really good job at showing that desperation yep. and showing how easily you could get whipped into this actually terrible, evil process. Well, I saw this movie very much as the devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Pseudo devil's advocate. Because it was very much, and I think Michael Shannon was better than Al Pacino was in that movie. Yeah. I, it was very much, you're going to work for a monster, and you are going to slowly become him. He is going to lure you in, he's going to give you promises, and and buy your soul, with literally with money, and you are going to give it to him. Because my, because Dennis Nash is so ashamed of what he's doing, he refuses to tell his mom, mm -hmm. he refuses to tell anybody what he's actually doing. He's lying about how he's going about these means, and he's slowly becoming the monster that he hated. And I thought it was great. I'm like, this is a better version of The Devil's Advocate. I, I, I got a feeling from uh, Rick Carver's character, even though he was a monster himself, you could tell that he was a made monster. And well, he's actually yeah. working for worse monsters yeah, than him. Yeah, and he has a great monologue where he, he says, it's everyone else's fault. You guys all created me. Yeah. I didn't want to be this guy, mm -hmm. but you created me. And now I'm going to take advantage of it. And it was great. Yeah. It was great. I, Michael Shannon was phenomenal. Um, Laura Dern was, was fine as the mom. Yeah. Yeah. But really, um, it focuses it's mainly those on those two. The, the master and the apprentice. I, I still wish it was someone else besides Andrew Garfield. Yeah. He See, could, I think he, he was all right. He can nail that um, regular American accent pretty good. Yeah. But I don't know. But there, there was a process where he's supposed to be kind of wrapped up in it and he's starting to get money, but he, most people try to look the part. He always had this kind of cruddy, I have mange beard <laughs> going on. He never really cleaned up, That's stuff Florida. like that. This is Florida for you. 
Really? Is it? Uh, that's, that's the pain. Do we have any affiliates that's, in no, Florida? Have, All right. Well, it's Florida. Florida. Nobody in Florida watches this. <laughs> I said it. Last week it was the French. If you're thinking about picking it up. <laughs> Last week it was France. This week it's Florida. Yeah, but we're, they understand English. We're taking uh, swings at them all. But oh, um, yeah, ultimately I gave 99 homes four stars. Yeah. Um, I dug it a lot. Well, guess what? You're yeah? correct. Oh, yeah, it's, good. It's I a got four it right. star movie. I got the answer right this time. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah, I recommend it, man. I, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of weird. You go to one movie expecting <laughs> something great because they've been pimping out fan yeah, for yeah. a long for a time. Yeah. And then uh, you kind of hear about 99 Homes. kind of just snuck in. Yeah. And then you turn around and you're like, wow. 99 Homes really moved me, and what was that other movie What's I the saw? Other one? Yeah, that exactly. was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I highly recommend it, and, and I just I look forward to everything that Michael Shannon is in, um, and it was it was just a, it was a really well shot movie. I, I was very surprised by it. Yeah, so yeah. definitely, definitely highly Go recommend. Yes, uh, moving forward, sir. Or I, I got one more question. Oh yes. Do you think uh, it has any Oscar potential? I don't we're know. starting at getting into those movies now. That's yeah, something we got to start thinking yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that, you know, Michael Shannon possibly, but... Not direction? No, no. Hmm. I don't think it's that I don't think it's that quality of Not movie. even a nom? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I mean, not knowing what's coming, not knowing the quality of what's coming sure. out, not having seen anything come out, but knowing what uh, my expectations are for what's coming out in the next two months, mm -hmm. I, I'm... I'm hopeful that those are better than this. Yeah. Yeah. All that's, right. That's, I guess, where I'm going. But uh, but we will talk about that in January, I think. I, I think so. Taking a look back. Um, and speaking of taking a look back, segue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Noise. I like to announce the segue as I go. Uh, let's take a look back to uh, 1987 in our real reviews. Mm. Movie throwback. Yeah. Uh, and in 1987, our throwback is Empire of the Sun mm -hmm. uh, from kinda, Steven Spielberg. Kind of coincides a little bit with the pan, mm -hmm. war torn uh, area, and uh, a boy out of that war torn area. Yep. Just a different side of the world. Yeah. Taken yeah. in by the enemy mm -hmm. and uh, forced to uh, deal with it. Hey, he also has a buddy that's really not a buddy at all. Right. Uh, in Pan, for some reason, they stayed true buddies yeah. through the whole way. We're buddies way. for life. But anyhow. Second star to the left, straight on until morning. And they hint, I'm not going to talk about that movie anymore. That's just not. It was uh, <laughs> let's talk about Empire of the Sun, though. Like I said, from director Steven Spielberg, you may have heard of him, uh, starring a very young Christian Bale, uh, John Malkovich, Joey Pantoliano, Joey Pants, I like to call him, uh, and Miranda Richardson. That's, that's the bulk of your main cast. And uh, Michael, talk about Empire of the Sun. It is a story of of a uh, war-torn country, World well, War II. This is uh, Japan near, attacks China. Yep, yeah, this is near the end of World War II, and um, Japan attacks China, which uh, the English has colonized. Right. Um, after everybody is forced out or killed or put into a camp, yeah. we are left with Christian Bale, who's the lone boy. <laughs> he's the lone, <laughs> and, a lone survivor. And, and he's actually a super brat. It's mm -hmm. really easy to hate this kid. Right. And um, he has to learn how to survive, and he has to make friends with people who really aren't friendly. <laughs> exactly. Until he gets uh, caught. So half of the movie is him being in the... Uh, um, concentration camps. So yeah. it's it's considered a classic. It's I thought it was shot beautifully. Mm -hmm. Some a lot of these uh, scenes you could just take out and put them in a book, and yep. people would be like, "Wow, this is extremely pretty." But that's what um, Steven Spielberg pretty much is known for is his epic. Uh, He's got view. an amazing eye for through that viewfinder and, of just capturing beautiful images. And uh, I. I it's like one of my favorite Steven, Steven Spielberg uh, nice. movies. Um, watching uh, Christian Bale, and I'm really not a big Chris, Christian Bale fan in that camp and how he lost weight, and you could see that the boy he was in the beginning of the movie yeah. is entirely different. He becomes desperate and kind of conniving and kind of broken yeah. at the same time. It was just extremely uh, powerful movie. I, at least that's uh, my point of view. I, I agree. I think it has beautiful cinematography, mm -hmm. beautiful imagery. Um, I think it's good, not great. Um, after rewatching it, it, like I told you when we picked this, it's been 25, probably 25 years since I saw the movie, so memories are hazy. I had to yeah. rewatch it. And yeah, I think it, there's, it feels just disjointed to me. It feels like there's spots in there, like there's moments 
within, but they're loosely tied from great moment to great moment. That there's loose ties in there that uh, a two hour and 34 minute movie could have been two hours and 12 minutes and been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But it just feels like there's lags throughout for me. Um, I, I enjoy John Malkovich. He yeah. feels weird in this movie, mm -hmm. but he feels weird in everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, think it's, I think it's good. Um, I, I remembered rewatching it, what I always got hung up on was the stupid saluting. It infuriates me. Uh, the, oh. Every time he's he gets caught by the Japanese, uh, they just salute him like, okay, kid. <laughs> this wouldn't happen. They, they were ruthless. They would have killed him with piano wire immediately. Yeah. They would not have saluted this kid as he's standing next to one of their planes as they catch him. You know, well, it's like, a whole patriotic yeah, thing. You know. um, the, uh, fun fact, it did win six uh, Oscar nominations. Uh, yeah, it was nominated for six Oscars. Yeah, six of them. All tech Oscars, all technical awards they all for went cinematography to the last and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a great movie. Yeah. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, obviously, I'm sure everybody uh, <laughs> <laughs> thought that. <laughs> yeah, but Empire of the Sun is is uh, well worth watching if you haven't seen it. Well, 1987, uh, a great Spielberg movie. Yeah, good to almost. Be he good. Spielberg <laughs> loves World War II. He really does. Really does. He keeps going back to it <laughs> over. In the wrong and circles, over. talking about and it. And there's another probably. one coming out. <laughs> another Spielberg uh, yeah. war movie coming out this weekend uh, as we talk. But uh, that is our movie throwback for the week. Let's take a look at what is coming soon. The weekend of October 23rd. We have four movies scheduled uh, on the on uh, the, the marquee that weekend. So first one we have is Gem and the Holograms. Mm. The Looking feature, forward to the it. live action feature film of the 1980s cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, looks, that really needed to be made. <laughs> looks interesting. <laughs> it looks interesting for sure. Uh, the next movie we have is The Last Witch Hunter. This is uh, a movie starring Vin Diesel. And he's going to be hunting some... It looks just ethereal and weird. I, I and actually... I'm excited. Yeah, I like it. I, the trailer has sold me on it. I'm really hopeful for mm -hmm. it. Uh, the third movie we have stars my man, Bill Murray. We got Rock the Casbah. I don't know what I feel about this one yet. It's hard to tell, right? Yeah. Um, but he plays a sleazy uh, band manager, record executive, who yeah. go, gets his group uh, overseas oh. in the Middle East, and then they leave him. It seems like a, lately a lot of these Bill Murray movies, um, you see more Bill Murray in the, um, in the previews, trailer. yeah, trailers, yeah, yeah. Hey, than you do in the he movie. He sells tickets. He does he sell tickets. tickets. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, and the last movie that we have uh, the weekend of October 23rd is Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. It's just got to stop. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> This movie was supposed to come out, what, last year? I don't know. I think it was. It was supposed to be last July, like, not the July, we just, just, but the year. No, I don't want to see this movie. We can movie. Just stop with these. Number seven? Each and every, come I don't on. know what it is. Come I stopped on. after two. Is that fair? I stopped watching You should have stopped halfway through the first one. That's <laughs> I'm not terrible. Even, I'm not a fan of the paranormal activities, but that's to each their own, I guess. Uh, those are the movies that will be coming out the weekend of October 23rd. Uh, before we leave you, though, of course, we have to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Thank you for sponsoring our show. The Palace here in beautiful Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is, it is... It lives up to his name. It is a palace for watching movies, and we mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you would like to find more from us or join the discussion or anything like that, you can do so on our Facebook page. Just search Real Reviews TV. You can go on to our Twitter page, uh, at Real Reviews TV. We post all kinds of links and things like that, and uh, we have a good time on there. You can find us if you, uh, you want to watch the show. Uh, Maybe you don't get K-Sun. Hmm. Maybe you don't get this this channel. You can watch it on KSUN.TV, or uh, if it works for you, you can watch it on YouTube, right? Yeah, and if you just can't get enough of this guy, he has tons of podcasts. <laughs> right, tons of podcasts. <laughs> if you go on our Facebook page or our Twitter feed, you'll see, oh, yeah, there's tons of stuff coming out. Uh, it, but you can find us on all of those locations. Uh, and uh, next week... We will be talking about Bridge of Spies. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about Goosebumps mm -hmm. and Crimson Peak. Looking forward to that one. A lot. I think it's, I think it's gonna be another really fun weekend. I'm enjoying good weekends of movies. Yeah, until that weird Star Wars movie comes out. Yeah, oh, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> that movie's not gonna make any money. I promise. That's a guarantee. <laughs> but, yikes. Uh, but until we reconvene next week, my name is Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching. Thank you.